order up. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to Waitress. This is the movie that you guys voted on for the Valentine's Week special. So thank you so much for voting on the polls and selecting this as the movie. Well, you technically selected two movies because two of the movies were tied in votes. Um, so I randomized it. Uh, you can go check out that video where I uh, announced the winner and all. I randomized it. I tried to show it on camera. But yeah, Waitress was our winner. So, what do I know about this movie? Pretty much nothing. Just like just like the last one we did uh, for yesterday. Um, I don't really know much of anything about this. I don't know who's in it. I don't know what it's about. Though I do know, again, it's a foodie movie. And I assume from the title that it has to do with the struggles of being a waitress. Um, I mean, I guess technically maybe it's not really about the struggles of such, but I kind of assume it probably is going to be. Because I, I've seen like that kind of thing mentioned in various places before. From TikTok to YouTube videos to Facebook posts. Um, the entire struggles that a lot of waitresses have to go through, sometimes in making, you know, good wages, sometimes in just being treated properly, can be hell in a lot of cases. I I've heard stories of, like, waitresses who have been, you know, sexually assaulted pretty much daily in their jobs waitresses who are treated as basically servants for the customers um who are just completely like horribly handled and treated by their employers and i'm not just talking about like the uh the hostesses and waitresses at like somewhere like Hooters or whatnot, um, where, mind you, they deserve to be treated properly too. But at places like that, there's also almost kind of an expectation of that kind of gaze and stuff because of just, you know, like, let's be honest, Hooters is built upon the sex appeal aspect so that's that's kind of part of the job but again they deserve to be treated with dignity and whatnot there too they that goes for anywhere like sex workers deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and a lot of times they don't get treated that uh well either so but the point is, waitresses oftentimes can have it really bad. And a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, uh, quite a few waitresses are doing the job because it's what they can get. It's a survival job, more than anything, a lot of the time. Again, not all of the time, I'm not even going to say most of the time, but there are a lot of scenarios where that is the case. And... No matter what kind of establishment you work at, you deserve to be treated properly by both your employers, fellow employees, uh, as well as the customers. Like, you, you are serving them in a way but you are not servile to them. They are not your bosses. They are customers who you are helping. And if they treat you poorly, then 
Fuck them, honestly. And again, and this obviously goes for a lot of different careers, not just uh, not just waitressing, but I, I'm just saying this is all stuff that I have heard of directly from people who have been in this industry. And I look, I, I, I thankfully have never been in that kind of position. The only food service position I've ever been in was, you know, basically grill and fry cook at Wendy's. Um, that's pretty much all I ever did there. Granted, I wasn't there for very long, but all I really did was man the grill in the fry station. So I, I, I usually didn't even deal with customers too often. The only times I ever did is if I was like taking out the trash and someone asked me something. In which case I would respond or, you know, get some assistance from another employee. Do what I had to do to help. And I, I almost never luckily faced anyone too rude or, you know, anything like that. Though, to be fair, um, at the time when I worked at Wendy's, I also identified as male, and, you know, people tend to be just automatically nicer to men in the food industry than women, because sexism, and people just treat women like shit, in general. But, okay, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting very heavy here, um... I'm recording this on Thursday, so I it was the day I recorded um, the uh, Hellbound video. And I got, like, really, really down because of that, so... Sorry if I seem like I'm, uh... <laughs> a bit out of it, or, like, you know... Um... More just emotionally drained than usual because like I, I i've watched stuff in between i had my lunch break and everything and i watched some stuff during and that helped obviously but geez <laughs> it just it brought me down so anyway let's let's move on so like i said i don't really know much of anything about this film going in i can only just talk about like what the title makes me think of so in the meantime tell me in the comments below what did you think uh or, i'm getting so flustered by everything that i'm just messing up this is not the afterthoughts this is the pre-thoughts let's get this started let's just get this going so i can like calm the fuck down and just watch this movie so when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades black and then it fades back in, everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, first off, this movie was written and directed by Adrian Shelley, who played Dawn as well. And this movie came out, let me see, in 2007, according to this, which is a lot more recent than I expected. Like, I, I thought this movie was, like, from the 80s or something, maybe the 90s, but no, apparently this was from 2007. It, it was an independent, like, film premiered at sh uh, at Sundance and all. Um, but yeah, this movie was also released posthumously for, uh, Adrian, um, Shelley, <laughs> sorry. For Adrian Shelley, because in 2006, Adrian Shelley, who again wrote, directed, and starred in this, was murdered.
by a construction worker in her building. She was strangled and hung. And never got to see the release of her own film. Which is a really dark, depressing fact to have learned about this movie, looking things up uh, in between the reaction and this redirect. Um, but, according to this as well, her husband ended up establishing the Adrian Shelley Foundation, which awards scholarships, production grants, finishing funds, and living stipends to artists. The Women Film Critics Circle gives an annual Adrian Shelley Award in honor to the film that it finds the most passion that the film that it finds most passionately opposes violence against women. And this message, this amazing message that came out of such a horrific tragedy also is kind of reflected in this movie because a big portion of this movie is about violence against women our main character has to deal with an abusive husband who we see physically abuses her it's not just emotionally and mentally it gets very physical he is not just possessive of her but he is actively violently abusive and it, it, it's clearly something that you could tell by the way this film was made that adrian shelley wanted to draw attention to it's something that I, I don't know if she had like gone through that a lot in her life or had just heard of other people around her doing ha having gone through that but it's something that she wanted to make a focus of her film and the message was definitely felt because watching this movie like i just wanted the best for her i wanted her to be able to start fresh and honestly i kind of wanted earl to get stabbed in the face <laughs> but i knew that was not gonna happen um unfortunately um Abusive spouses really bother me, and abusive family members in general. Anyone who would abuse a family member, a spouse, a child, um, a, 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 an elderly member of the family, no matter what the case may be, if you abuse a family member like that, like, fuck off. You deserve the absolute worst if you are going to do something like that. If you make it so that this family member lives in constant fear and pain and misery, then you deserve the worst. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You deserve, honestly, death for putting someone through that shit. I don't believe in the death penalty, but at the very least, they... You could still say that they deserve it. And they should at least be imprisoned for shit like that. I mean, abusers of any kind should always be imprisoned. But, you know, it does not always happen in our society. It, I, I feel with previous movies on this channel, I, I feel like my stance on this kind of thing is pretty well known. I, I really don't like abuse. I, I, and I mean, honestly, no one should. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I really don't like a lot of the shit that uh, people are put through. And how unfortunately real a lot of this movie felt. But, a a every bad thing can have a silver lining. And that was definitely a factor in this film. Because even with her abusive husband, she had friends who were there for her. 
she found someone who would love her and helped her through these tough times. And even though she didn't end up with him in the end, by her choice, because she chose to start completely fresh, even though she didn't end up with him in the end, she was grateful for everything he had done and for his unwavering kindness. Also, the fact that at the end she gave him the moon pie is fucking hilarious. Uh, and and I, I mean that with, like, respect and everything. But that there's almost a certain level of, like, sass to that. <laughs> because it's like, th this woman makes pies. She's really fucking good at making pies. She ended up, she did end up winning that contest. Got a blue ribbon. And she gave him a moon pie. That's fucking amazing. They're, like, you don't even need to explain why that's funny. It's a moon pie. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And I also like the fact that she chose this for herself because she did want to start completely fresh. Having fallen head over heels in love for her with, with her daughter at, at birth, um, who she originally did not even want, and was even talking about possibly, like, you know, quote-unquote selling her, like, the instant she held her baby after birth, it's like it all melted away. You, it literally showed every everything and everyone around her, like, blurring to showcase that there was nothing else in the world to her at that moment besides her and Lulu. And I think that was a, an amazing way to depict that, but also to show that sometimes the things that you, you, you find yourself dreading or just in general not looking forward to can end up surprising you in the best ways. And I, I know there's some people out there who don't want kids and are gonna like it might think that this movie is trying to say like, oh, it's trying to force the idea that, oh, if you just have a kid, you'll end up loving them. And it it's not saying that. If you don't want kids, that's perfectly valid. And it if you believe that this kind of thing would not happen to you, uh, that's perfectly valid. This is just one specific example. And it's made clear that her, her disdain for having the child was not due to the child. It makes that very clear throughout the movie. She even pretty much blatantly says it, that it's not the baby's fault, it's Earl's. It's because of her abusive husband who, you know, she had the baby with. It's because of that that her, her love for the baby wasn't there because, because in her eyes it was just another reminder of her seemingly escapeless life. That's also why when she embraced Lulu and fell in love with her, she found her courage and confidence right then and there to break up with Earl. To tell him she wanted nothing to do with him ever again, that she wanted the divorce, and that she didn't want him anywhere near Lulu. She made it clear that he was the thing holding her interest in having a child back because she didn't want to bring it she even said during the movie she didn't want to bring a child into this world it's it was because of him so when she got to hold lulu and and fell in love with her she realized i can let that go now i can break that off so that lulu doesn't have to grow up around that so that i can be happy and this was before she even found out about the check. Before, you know, she got that big money. <laughs> it 
which was uh, a beautiful gift a beautiful gift from honestly a beautiful man like he he I think it's kind of like what she said. Um, dog might start barking in a second, by the way. But she kind of said er earlier in the movie to Joe that it's like, oh, you're not as mean as you like to act. And she was absolutely right. He was putting on this front because he didn't have any friends. He didn't have any positivity around him other than her. They became friends. They grew close. I mean, and you even see that before the end, before they, like, you know, meet in the hospital and before you, uh, she reads his card. You see that at the wedding. You see how supportive of her he is there. And when he, especially when he sees Earl, when he actually gets to meet Earl, like, he, he was genuinely, like, horrified and concerned. I think he was probably one of the best characters in this movie. Because of how well he was written and how well uh, Andy Griffith acted in the role. Um, and I just really, really like what they did with the pacing of this. Because this clearly takes place over a good amount of time. It takes place pretty much over her entire pregnancy, nine months. So... It never felt like it went by too slow, though. It never fe felt like the pacing was too slow or too fast. It always felt like it was, like, just right. You could always tell by various factors, um, like, approximately of what points in the pregnancy she was at at any given time. You could see how things were changing and see how things would, like, connect at different points. And I, re I really like how they handled that. Um, the acting from everyone was great. Uh, a lot of good actors in this. Nathan Fillion, obviously fantastic. Carrie Russell was great. Everyone really, really, really did well. And I can see why this eventually became a musical, and I guess the musical spawned its own movie remake. It really is like The Color Purple, isn't it? Um, except I don't believe this is based off a book. <laughs> um, but yeah... I really liked this. I really liked what they went for here. And it's really sad that this woman who wrote and directed this movie, who made such a powerful, strong, beautiful film, never got to see it, like, showcased. She never got to see it premiere. And it's, it's just, it, it shows exactly the kind of things we need to speak out against. The kind of things we need to put so much focus and attention in. We need to keep working to stop abuse against women from all kinds of sources. Violence against women needs to be stopped. And we need to do our best to make that happen. This movie really did do extremely well at pretty much every regard. And, and I, and I want to touch on a topic kind of uh, partially to close out this review. Because it, it is such a big topic in the film. And, and I, and I want to kind of touch on the question of what is the morality of... Of her cheating here. I'm, and I'm talking specifically about our main girl. I'm not talking about the doctor also cheating on his wife. Um, I am specifically talking about what is the morality of this woman who has an abusive husband who is physically, emotionally, mentally abusive against her. What is the morality of a woman like that in, in that kind of horrible position cheating on her husband? This is a topic that is very difficult because there are some people out there who believe that infidelity, no matter what the reason, is bad. I disagree. And I know this is going to be a controversial opinion here. 
But I believe that if you are stuck in an actively unhappy marriage, that's not just unhappy because of differences of opinion or something, but especially because of active abuse and pain and terror that you're feeling, you have a right to yourself, to your happiness, to find something else. If you are, for whatever reason, unable to leave that situation, whether for any reason of fear to do so, of monetary reason to do so, of because of children you might have, it doesn't matter. If you are unable to, you still deserve happiness. And if that means finding someone who will give you that happiness, give you that love that you need, I don't see the problem with that. I think the idea of infidelity being like entirely bad is an, kind of an American thing. Um, because it, it's like an American idea that like marriage a, a, as it's like this big constitution and it's not just an american thing it's also a christian thing let's be honest where it's like oh you're supposed to view marriage as this like godly thing it's say it has sanctity and everything you're supposed to see it as this holy ceremony and so cheating is meant to be seen as wholly bad because it is it goes against that it's like you're breaking some kind of like massive vows and don't get me wrong i'm not saying like marriage isn't a big deal but again in certain situations you might just you might need to put yourself first There's nothing wrong with trying to find happiness for yourself as a first priority. Like, we, we talk all the time in, in our culture about, you know, putting others above ourselves and everything, but that's not always the case. If we always put others above ourselves, then what do we have left? We give our love, our attention, our focus to all the people around us and we're neglecting our own needs. I'm not saying you should always put yourself first either because then you just end up being rude and inconsiderate and it's in a lot of cases, a dick. <laughs> you, sh you have to find the balance. You have to know when to put yourself first and when to focus on others. And this is a situation where I believe that she had not only every right to put herself first, but had, you know, a need to for her own mental health, for her own physical health. She was pretty much required to put herself first. I don't think what she did was wrong. Now, on the doctor's side, his marriage is very much implied to actually be happy. There is no there is no real implication that he and his wife have a, have a bad marriage. In fact, there is literally the opposite, especially near the end when she actually appears. And I think that's especially why um, we see them, you know, end the relationship at the end. Well, we see her break it off with him, but because she could sense, as she mentioned, that uh, his wife had complete trust and love for him. And it wasn't fair to her for him to do this because that love was still there between them. With her and Earl, it was a completely different story. And this is why she wasn't even she wasn't mean to him in the end either. She she thanked him. She was very grateful. 
and, and she was very considerate to him. She didn't. She wasn't mean. She didn't uh, break it off rudely or anything. No. Because she was very thankful for everything he did for her. But she also understood that it needed to end. For her sake, for his sake, for his wife's sake. And I think it was just absolutely the right move. And at that point, she needed to move on anyway for her daughter and for herself. She needed to, again, start fresh. Kind of the, the main, like, headline of the film in a way. <laughs> this movie was a joy to watch. It was hard to watch at times, but it was a joy to watch as well. And it ended on a very happy note. It ended very well because we have this understanding that not only did she not need a man in her and her daughter's life to take care of them, but she chose specifically to not have that because of the issues that it had brought on. Because even though she she was falling in love with, her, with the doctor, she also had a lot of stress and, and fear from it too. It wasn't good for her, and, and she didn't want to, again, bring that into her baby's life. So, she made the right call. And it's made very clear at the end that it worked out perfectly for, for her, and everything went great after that, because she finally learned when to put herself first for the sake of her and her daughter it, it just it worked out I, I really like this movie it's not like the best movie I've seen or anything like that but I really did like this um, maybe one day I'll end up uh, watching the, the the remake like we did with Color Purple I don't know we'll see um, but in the meantime, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of Waitress? Let me know. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.